So you can you can see the browser window at least. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. I I actually I have to be honest. I haven't I haven't read through this yet myself. Uh, Me neither. Which, I'm which a little behind. I read yeah. it last night. Yeah. I need to do that again. I was doing that in the first three chapters at least, but. Uh, So there, I think you all were talking about it a second ago when, when, when he's talking about spending, when they're talking about spending our data, it has to do with like the, the, the creating the test and validation sets or like having enough data to spend to create a model, what? Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah how you would split it. You have to, yeah, you have to keep it separated. So you can use so much for validation, so much for testing, so much for training. I, uh, how, what would be the best way to, to use uh, your data as um, what, like, the, the topic of stratification, what would be the best uh, thing, uh, the best part. Let's mm -hmm. see uh, which, um, let me approach for empirical model validation. Yeah, I think uh, this is the, a bit of the, 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 the most important part of the, the chapter, yeah. How to use, uh, how to stratify. Sometimes, sometimes you base that on, uh, uh, on, on the outcome. Then you stratify based on, on, on the outcome. So you, if you have, for example, you want to predict sales, then you stratify based on the, um, how uh, on sales how uh, study five means that he going to uh, split the data uh, and taking consideration of the proportion uh, of I, how the um, uh, for example in case of sales how the, the, the vector of sales is composed like I don't know if there's many common values. So he splits the data, make, making sure that these are um, uh, more or less um, quite uh, similar. Like then you decide how, how much of your data you want to put in the training set, how much of your data you want to put in the test set and usually is like 80% uh, in the training set and 20% on, on the test set. Does anybody know where those numbers come from? Is, some, is it like PO5 where they just kind of said, well, this is a good one? I've heard 70, I 30 too, I think. I mean, I don't know. I know 80, 20. I have a, <laughs> I have a I feeling, know. Brandon, you're probably right. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things. I you see it again and again. Um, I don't know who who came up with because in some, you know in business speak there's that eighty twenty rule, right? Yeah, like the, you, and you, the Pareto principle too. And econ, everybody yeah. knows about that. <laughs> Takes you know a little bit of work to do eighty percent, and then you, that last twenty percent is really hard or whatever. Is kind of how it's used where I'm at, but. Yeah, so yeah, maybe yeah. you won't do the twenty percent hard stuff <laughs> if eighty <laughs> if eighty percent solves your solution. Oh, you but like in this case, you're using twenty percent to figure out the parameters of your model and using that to validate on the eighty percent. Is that right? Or is it the? Do I have that backwards? So you're no, I have the it backwards. testing is twenty percent. Ah. So yeah, eighty percent is created a model. Okay. Then I the validation think, um, is uh, one more. One uh, then the validation is if you want if you need uh, one more split of your data you you also have validation data before to apply the the prediction to the test set you use the validation to validate if this the your prediction is valid and then you finally test it on the test set yeah and then I think in the 
um, book down, it says that it comes in the Pareto principle. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that's probably why I, I, I was like, yeah, I'm sure uh, everybody I loves that on. Pareto mm -hmm. principle. Yeah, eighty percent from the twenty percent. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah. I guess the whole point is trying to figure out which twenty percent of your organization is creating eighty percent of the value, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of a scary thought. I guess if you're not considered to be the twenty percent, aka management. <laughs> <laughs> Although that's not completely true. Uh, let's see, where were we? So here they're they're actually running some code and splitting the uh, the aims data set based upon the uh, using the initial split function and giving a proportion in this case saying eighty percent. Mm -hmm. What so what is this outcome here in terms of what is the structure of aims split? Is it a list with two two things? That's is, it a list, is it a list column? Or something like that. Um, the output here doesn't kind of doesn't almost doesn't look like that's what it is. It's. Yeah, I think it's some kind of object. I, I unfortunately I don't have my R Studio open because I'm having network issues. This tells you uh, mm. how many observation oh. are in each uh, of the oh. of the split. Makes sense. Is there like a split object type that's been created for this? package like this i don't know because it's interesting to me that when you when they print aim split it's like it just is basically some text that shows you how the data was divided mm -hmm. um. oh it is so it's an r split object it only contains the partitioning information so to oh, get the result so it's, so it's like it's literally like a special kind of object yeah, that, I, th I think that it would, is, yeah. And then you need to apply another function to actually get the data. So two more trading. So it's, it's, quite, it's, it's being quite lazy then too. So it's just saying these are the identifiers that identify the two splits. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. it doesn't need another pull function that information until them. it doesn't pull yeah, it until you, you actually need it. It says if you do class M split, it says the object is an R split object. Yeah. So it's an R split object. <laughs> Special object. Then my my, um, my question about this: uh, if you, for example, you don't want to satisfy by the outcome, maybe for example, if you do principal component analysis, so do you don't use the outcome, and you use just you do unsupervised learning, so you use just the predictors at the point what what if you want to do stratification what would be the correct way to um certify the sample well i guess wouldn't it be having like um something from like each uh different zip code or, or wide variety of housing mm -hmm. values because you don't want to have it all the, the test set, or the sorry yeah the test set being like the high value houses or the low value houses or you know so you see how well the model does in predicting a wide variety of outcomes and perhaps even by um neighborhood i'm trying to remember the set uh neighborhood i guess is one of the predictors so nice I was trying to pull it up. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you uh, need to. I need to actually do it though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just split. Yeah, it's not very. Um... There you go. Now you can see what is in there. Ah, with the structure. So it has a. It has the original data, as a tibble. Yeah, as a tibble, yeah. And then it. It's created factors for everything, or they were already factors. 
Yeah. Oh, no, that's that's the, that's the tibble. That's the tibble. My yeah. bad. And then the other things are NID out ID, which is a logical vector of NA. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I guess. And then ID wrong. tibble. Some sort of resampling. So it's just really the, yeah, the. Somebody's like dog randomly, not they yeah, like randomly. <laughs> just like randomly numbered the, the rows, pretty much of the data. But I guess it hasn't really done anything beyond that. Okay, so that's what Ames split is, and then we can create Ames train and Ames test. <laughs> I'm mute. Um, in the statistical learning book, they do in the because I did it. The um, the example in one of the labs uh, of the um, uh, of this uh, creating a training and a test set, which is quite nice to see oh. how it made. Uh, instead, with tiny models, you just use use the function. When you, when you do initial split, then you do training, it does everything. Instead, uh, in the statistical learning, you, you can see the steps for making the, uh, the training and test set with R, like doing the passages with a four and everything. So in this case, you're you're specifying what you want to make sure that you have a good spread of with the strata. Um, so you're saying I want to ensure that I have a good stratification of sale price. That you know don't don't give me a um, a random thing back that has too many of the high prices or too many too many low prices. Right. Yeah. Don't uh, yeah. touch the balance. I suppose you could do that with anything, even some of these factors, like uh, don't give me too many houses that have a, uh, a regular lot shape mm -hmm. yeah, or something like that. Okay. This is interesting. Random sampling is not the best choice. You think it would time be series data. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you, you can't oh, do yeah, the time uh, series. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. You can't uh, like have the future in your training. Yeah, model. I'll try to let me see if I can find that article and link it. Just I know I was looking at that earlier, and I probably have it open on one of my bazillion tabs. You have the same problem, right? You mean having... my, you're seeing my tabs, but they're all grouped. So there's oh. like hundred, there's hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> my, hus my husband is like, what is the matter? Is he like, I might come back to it, you know? <laughs> so well, I, you can see my tidy models one right there. It's all splayed out. I don't even group mine. I'm just bad. I just like keep opening stuff up. So. Well, and I have a, I have another Chrome window that has all my work shit too. So it's like double the problem. <laughs> But uh, so so obviously, yeah, you you wouldn't want to do an initial time split. You would want you would want to use a time sensitive or a time relevant uh, split because if you pull too much from an early time or a late time, you you don't have good a good spread yeah. of your data across time. Uh, so here they're saying what proportion should be used. Okay, too little data. Can't, can't get a good model. Too little data in the test set is not going to give you a good indicator of its performance. That makes sense. A test set should be avoided only when the data are pathologically small. What does that mean? <laughs> Uh, the magic <laughs> number there is 30, right? So, <laughs> I don't know. It's less than 30. <laughs> it's just an interesting use of pathologically to me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think then maybe you need to collect more data is the answer. 
Well, I can tell you in, in biology systems, that's sometimes very difficult to do. Yeah. Or you uh, might have to say, I you can't help you. That's not, not what that's they want to hear. But, yeah. some, yes, I've heard that before from statisticians. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you're, do, you're doing it wrong, but you can't do it right because you don't yeah, have yeah. enough in. It's like, well, okay, <laughs> thanks. I'm thanks going to keep that. doing what I'm doing. Oh, not to sidetrack too much, but a lot of the regression and other stories book is about how they address those kind of issues with a Bayesian approach. So you may not have a lot of data, but you might have a, a good prior that you can use and then that will give you, you know, something evidence-based. Yeah. So that's another way to deal with it. Yeah, I almost joined that book club because I've I actually have the Richard cool. McElreath's original book, <laughs> and I I got through about four chapters of it before I uh, yeah. <laughs> gave up. Oh. Not well, because it was hard, I just didn't I just didn't commit the time to it, you know. Yeah, no, I Are you talking about statistical that. rethinking? Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, like, there's a book I got club through the right Gollum now. chapter and all that other stuff. And yeah, I just we're didn't... doing a book club right now on it. I know, it's I know. Really, I, 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 you should totally join if you want. It's on I Wednesdays in, and like I, kind of I, I did read it. Uh, yeah. yeah, I did read it last year. It might be good to refresh, refresh my memory. Okay, so validation set. This so this is the twenty percent one, right? Yeah. Yeah, the data set is twenty uh, percent. So this this is about measuring the performance of of the model that you created from the uh, from the te test set. Uh, or no, that is the test set. You, 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 you the use the called? training set. Training. Oh, you, okay. Yeah, you use the training set, the eighty percent for for making the model and the prediction. Then you test the prediction on the testing. Set. It might be Guys, I, for... I have to drop off. Um, I'll catch up with y'all in the future. Uh, just Thank have you. to meet with a, a co-worker here. Thank you so much. Have Thank a good you. weekend. Yeah, you too. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so I, I don't think there's a whole lot more of this anyway. So uh, the multi-level data property is an independent experimental unit. Um, so each row is kind of independent, but that's not really true, is it? Because we were last week we were looking at um, geography, so we had neighborhoods, and so those those in those in neighborhoods are kind of almost like their own little unit. That's very common in the Midwest anyway. To you have uh, housing divisions that are you know have a certain property value range and then others that have a different property value range depending on the uh i guess the niceties of the uh of the of the subdivision itself so treating them as random is not always necessarily the good thing i think is what they're just saying here um does anybody see that different Uh, no, I think you're right. And then uh, other considerations. It is critical to quarantine the test set from any model building activities. Yeah. Don't cheat, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Don't peek at what you're trying to predict. 